Hello, good morning. Welcome to today's session. My name is Jo. Um, and today we are going to talk about OET writing. So in the meantime, can you please let me know in the chat box where you are today and if you're taking the exam soon? Okay. <clears throat> Okay. All right, so today we're going to be looking at um, OET writing case notes and easy and quick steps to understand. Okay. So Before we start, I'd just like to let you know about some of the things we've got on our website. Um, we've got um, our courses, Reach OETB, Nursing and Medicine. Um, and we've also got, um, okay. We've also got um, our OET writing correction service, and we also have some OET practice tests that you can buy. Um, notice that the, um, Reach OETB nursing and medicine courses are self-study courses, but you can also buy packages that connect you with one of our tutors as well. So you can do self-study or with a tutor. And you can also um, buy separate ones as well. So you can buy just the reading, um, just the listening, just the speaking, or just the writing if there's just one paper you need to improve. Um, so do check out our website. It's specialistlanguagecourses.com. Um, for reading, we've got lots of interactive activities to help improve your ability to pass the exam, including vocabulary and the kind of language that you would get um, in the OET reading. For listening as well, lots of vocabulary um, to help you um, with listening. For example, some of the 12 profession language that could come up in the papers as well. Um, loads of speaking phrases that you can use. And we've also got a really innovative, interactive platform where you can actually record yourself and have a conversation. Uh, writing, of course, is very important. And again, loads of great vocabulary. There's grammar work there, case notes, um, and test practice, of course. So what we're going to do today is look at what's on the case notes, how to understand and analyze them, selecting content and also having accuracy of content and how to avoid irrelevancies. So first of all, I would like you to let me know in the chat box, true or false. So let me know the numbers and write true or false or T or F. Okay, I will let you do that now in the chat box, please. Which of these sentences are true?
Okay, so some great answers coming through here in the chat. That's great. Yep, a lot of you saying one is true. Absolutely. Four is true. Great. That's correct, Mitch. Yep. Um, Peter, hi, Peter, you're saying that number three is false. That's absolutely correct. Yeah. Okay. So let's have a little look at the answers. So here we go. Um, <clears throat> so we have got, you will always write a letter, absolutely. And you will always write as your profession. So if you're a doctor, you write as a doctor. Um, you won't always write a referral letter. Um, you um, might write a discharge letter, um, maybe a transfer letter, depending on the profession. Um, so you need to be prepared for that. And you should not include everything on the case notes. Absolutely, it's always related to the case. And all case notes contain the same information is, of course, false. Absolutely. Okay, so um, what I'd like you to do now, we're going to think about how we can... Um, um, approach the OET writing. But first of all, what kind of information is on the OET case notes? Let me know your ideas in the chat. So what kind of things are in OET case notes? Okay, what kind of things do you find? For example, medical background. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's right. Lots of things, yes. Social history, yes, Nareen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to show a few ideas of some things that we've got. So past medical history, social history, as some of you said, yeah, discharge, yes, absolutely, mm -hmm. main medical issue is always on there, um, okay, oh, I don't think you can see my screen, okay, you should be able to see that now, main medical issue is always there, um, often there are assessments, observations, and tests, a timeline of dates and appointments, Details of medication, yes, some of you have been saying. And treatment given, perhaps, hip operation, course of antibiotics, and physiotherapy. And of course, the plan for ongoing care, patient care needs. So don't panic if the context of the case notes in the exam is something you've never practiced. Whatever the context, the way you approach the case notes is the same. So we'll look at how to do that now. So step one, you look at the case notes, who are you writing to, why? Step two, you decide what information is relevant and what information the reader does not need to know for continued care, thinking about why you're writing. <coughs> Excuse me. Step three, make a plan. Decide on a logical way to group the information together in paragraphs. This is really key. Before you write your letter using clear language and leave a line between paragraphs to make them clear. And step four, always try and leave time for checking. Check for errors and make sure you've included that key information. So step one and two is what we're going to look at today. And this is how to analyze the case notes so that you can get a high score or achieve a high score for um, content and conciseness and clarity. So we do this by looking at the notes and the writing task, okay? This will give us information about the reader and the reason for writing, okay? And ask yourself some questions. Who am I? How do I know the patient? Who am I writing to? Is there an existing relationship? Why am I writing? What's the main purpose of my letter? So if we have a little look through here, we can see that the reader, sorry, we're writing, we have been Miss Bennett's GP for two years and have been treating her following hospitalization for cardiac problems. So this is the context, this is who we are. And the reader, we're writing a referral letter to Dr. Banjari, 
who is a consultant cardiologist. And the reason for writing, to outline her history and treatment so far, and specifically request advice and a review of her medication. So over to you, let me know in the chat box, number one, who's the reader? Number two, what's the reason for writing? Let me know in the comments now. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, absolutely. So we are writing to Ms. Emma Humphrey. And who is she? She's the nurse at Somerton Retirement Home. Um, and the reason is in form of the current situation and care required. Okay, so of course, the main focus of the letter is the care to be provided by Ms. Humphrey. And notice also that there's an existing relationship. It's where Mr. Smith lives. So this is really key to identify because if the reader knows the patient, there's going to be some information that they already know. Um, okay. So let's have a little look at selecting content. So to achieve a high score, you need to make sure all information is included that's needed for continued care. So the reader has the information they need and that it's accurate. So it's a twofold thing here. So let's have a little look at that now. So here we have um, a discharge, uh, it's a transfer letter. Um, and we're writing a transfer letter to Ms. Wallace, care home manager. And in your letter, outline care received in hospital and the ongoing care which needs to be provided after discharge. So we've got three lines here in the discharge plan, one, two, and three. Which of these do you think it's appropriate to include in this particular letter? Let me know in the comments now. <clears throat> which numbers? Just let me know the numbers. Mm -hmm. Yep, just seeing the comments coming through, that's right. Yeah. Right, so some of you saying one and three, some of you, one, two, three. Yeah, most of you saying all of them, and that is absolutely correct. You want to include all of these things because we're writing, um, we're transferring the patient to a care home and we need to outline ongoing care. And all of this is ongoing care. So we need to, um, to, to include all of it. So it's quite tricky sometimes. People find it difficult to decide what to include, what not to include. Um, sometimes it's obvious, absolutely, I need to include this, or absolutely, I don't need to include this. But what if you're not sure? What do you do? So this is what I would suggest asking yourself when you're in the exam so that you don't panic and you don't waste time. So ask yourself this question. Does the reader need to know this? in order to carry out the action you're requesting in the letter? If the answer is yes, the information is essential, then include it. If the answer is no, it's not connected to the action required, what you're asking them to do, then don't include it. And if it's maybe this information might be useful, don't spend five minutes analyzing it and going, oh, shall I include it? Shall I not include it? Shall I include it? Shall I not include it? Just include it. Yeah, um, if it's a maybe, 
just include it as long as you don't have 15 maybes yeah um it, it's just one or two pieces of information so that if it's not relevant it's not distracting from the main purpose so the other thing we need to do is look at accuracy of content so I have here some case notes. So these are for um, a medicine case, but if you're doing nursing, this is absolutely relevant as well. So notice here in the writing task, we're writing a letter of referral to a gastroenterologist for an assessment of Mr. Knowles. Um, and then here we've got his last um, consultation. So no improvement in reflux symptoms. Main concern is now back pain. We've got some new symptoms here. Uh, we've got a reduction in weight, weight loss since the last appointment, uh, tender abdomen, slightly swollen and yellow discoloration on the skin and eyes. And then plan is urgent referral to gastroenterologist for assessment and endoscopy. There's possible pancreatic malignancy and the patient is aware of this possibility. So look at the sentences on the right hand side which sentences are inaccurate. So don't present the information accurately. Let me know in the comments now. Okay. Which of the numbers do not represent the case notes accurately. Okay. So let's have a little look at and see which ones are correct. So if we look, he has pancreatic malignancy. Some of you saying this is incorrect. Yes, it is incorrect because we've got this little question mark here. It, we, we don't know for sure, it's possible. So you can't say that he has it if it, the diagnosis hasn't been confirmed. So do be careful of that. If you've got a question mark, it's possibly, it's your suspicion. So number one is incorrect. Number two, nobody said that, so that's great. This is all represented accurately. Yeah, many of you saying number three as well. Yes, Sam, yes, Ian Ambrosio, nice to see you. I'm putting that answer in there. Um, it's incorrect. It says, please, could you urgently refer Mr. Knowles for an assessment and endoscopy? No, this is what you're doing as the writer. So you, you, this is a mistake that some people make. They request, um, they request um, uh, a referral when you're the one actually writing the referral letter. So do be careful of that. Yes, and some of you saying four as well. Yes, and you. Um, hi, Andrew, um, you were saying number four, which is correct. His abdomen is very swollen. Um, it's slightly swollen. So you've got to be careful not to make assumptions that aren't there and not to change the meaning. So if it says slightly swollen, you can't say very swollen. Okay, so do be careful of things like that. Many people make these mistakes when they're trying to change the wording. Yeah, they want to demonstrate that they're using different language to the case notes. But if you do this, you've got to make sure that you don't change the meaning. Okay, so very important that you select the right content, they have everything they need, and that it's accurately represented. And that leads us on to irrelevancies, which is um, all part of content selection. 
So avoiding irrelevance is very important in order to score high, get a high score for conciseness and clarity. So you need to make sure you do not include irrelevant information, which the reader doesn't need to know. And you've also got to summarize the information concisely and clearly without unnecessary detail, which distracts the reader. So this could be maybe the, the information is relevant, but it's just in too much detail, which distracts the reader. Um, this is often coming up when people talk about ordering of tests. You know, I ordered the tests and asked her to come back and see me in three days time. Well, the reader doesn't need to know this information. They just need to know the results of the test. So things like that you need to be aware of. Um, irrelevancies is something that comes up when you're writing to another healthcare professional, and this can affect the information you choose to include when you write to someone that's not um, perhaps a nurse or not another doctor. So let me know in the comments, what other healthcare professionals might you write to other than a doctor or a nurse. Mm. <coughs> so a lot of you saying physiotherapists, Charmy, Nazia, yeah, absolutely. Any others? Mm -hmm. Some of you saying dietitian, nutritionist. Okay, yeah, dietitian. Uh huh. Um, occupational therapist. That's a common one. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh huh. Jajerwin saying psychiatrist. Yes, I mean, this is another form of a doctor I'm imagining as well. So a psychiatric doctor, psychologist. That's possible, yes. I think dentist. Mm, it's not likely that you'll write to a dentist if you're a doctor or a nurse. You might write to another dentist if you are a dentist, yes. Um, I've never come across um a, a, a context with a nurse or a doctor writing to a dentist but yes it could be any so we've got um here are some examples we could say um social worker um physiotherapist dietitian occupational therapist perhaps speech pathologist or podiatrist and so Selection of content needs to be based on reader awareness. So important. Only information relevant to them is needed. For example, an occupational therapist doesn't need information on medication. Physiotherapist only needs information relating to mobility rather than perhaps information on wound care post-operatively. So, Let's have a quick look. We've got here a uh, writing task. Have a quick look. Let me know in the comments, who are you writing to? Why? And what kind of information does the reader need to know in order to carry out these actions? Let me know in the comments now. Okay. Great. So some great ideas coming through here. Absolutely. So um, Chan Chan saying occupational therapist we're writing to. Yes. 
Yes, Priscilla on YouTube writing to, um, to Ms. Graham. Yeah, absolutely. And why? Um, we're writing to request an assessment of the patient's workplace specifically um, because he's returning to work after a back injury. And the kind of information that they need is perhaps information on his job relating, you know, that, that, that might affect um, him after having a back injury. Uh, current capabilities. We want to know about the injury perhaps, and maybe if there are any mobility aids needed or perhaps um, any physiotherapy that is required. Okay, and absolutely we need to request. So last little activity here. I've got two paragraphs relating to that context. Which paragraph only contains relevant information in this letter to an occupational therapist? So which one is better? Which one only contains relevant information and no irrelevancies? Let me know in the comments below. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes, yeah, I think everybody's saying paragraph two. Brilliant. Yes. So if we see paragraph two is definitely the one without irrelevancies. Paragraph one's got information about medication, for example, as well. And it's also got social information. You know, he's married with three children. That is not relevant to this context. Okay. So let's recap my top tips for understanding and using the case notes. So thinking about um, how we can do this quickly, easily, and effectively. So ask yourself, who is your reader? Why are you writing? What's the main focus of the letter? Have that clear in your head before you start writing. What are you requesting the reader to do? Very important that you have that clear in your head. What information does the reader need in order to carry out the required action? What information does the reader already know or not need to know? Okay, and make sure that the information you express is accurately represented. Okay. So these are the main questions you need to think about when you're trying to understand and analyze the case notes. Um, just a reminder, if you have any questions, uh, I've got time to answer a quick couple of questions you write in the comments. Um, while you're doing that, um, if you are preparing for your OET, as I said at the beginning, do check out our website. Uh, www.specialistlanguagecourses.com. We've got OET Writing Correction Service, which is a full correction of your letter with comments um, and scores. We've got practice tests where you receive full feedback and you also do a mock speaking test with a tutor and get um, feedback and grades on that. And we have our self-study courses, Reach OETB for medicine and nursing. Um, and these you can do on your own. You can do one skill only or a combination um, and you can do it on your own or with a tutor. We also have various other courses, for example, um, grammar for healthcare. So if you're really looking to improve your grammar, um, do think about <coughs> checking out those courses. OK. Uh, also, if you're not already following us on YouTube, please do. Um, check us out on YouTube. We've got lots of videos on there and we are currently in the middle of filming our season four of Tips and Strategies. So they will be coming up over the next few weeks, every week. Okay. If you do have any more questions, um, just to let you know that we do run a Q&A session on the last Wednesday 
of every month. And this is at 12 p.m. UK time, okay, midday UK time. And it's on our Facebook um, page, <clears throat> okay? Um, so if you do have any questions, please do come along to those sessions. So I believe the next one is in a couple of weeks. Um, very quickly, I'm going to answer just a couple of questions. Uh, I have a question from Merlin. Hi, can we write ongoing care or continuing care in the introduction paragraph? Well, um, Merlin, it really depends on, on the letter. I think if you're doing perhaps a transfer or discharge letter, and uh, continued care or ongoing care is the um, is what needs to happen to the patient, then you would absolutely present that in the first paragraph. You can then explain the details of this ongoing care in the later paragraphs. Um, and a very good question from Radshri. Hi, Radshri. How to identify whether the patient is known to the reader? Um, this is very important. You need to look um, at the, the, the notes and the task at the bottom. It will often give you information about where the patient lives. So for example, maybe you're writing to the care home where the patient already lives, or maybe you're writing to the patient's GP, and the patient's GB, GP or usually knows them, okay? Any more questions? please do join us for our Q&A and I'll be able to answer many more then. Um, so as I said, the next session is on Wednesday, the 29th of March, 12 p.m. UK time. If you follow us on Facebook, you'll get links and reminders to this. Okay, so that's the end of today's session. So thank you very much for coming. I hope you've enjoyed and found it useful. Um, I'll be back um, on YouTube for our followers and here for the Q&A on our Facebook page and see you all next time. Good luck with your studies and if anyone's taking the exam soon, good luck with that.